To be effective, the American fighting man needs a rifle that operates reliably in rugged jungle conditions, a full or semi-automatic lightweight weapon, one that combines accuracy with devastating impact. He has such a weapon in the M16A1 rifle. Yet, even this most modern of weapons lacks automatic maintenance. Like all rifles, past and present, the M16A1 must be correctly cared for and maintained if it is to work properly at all times. It is still the job of the rifleman to keep his weapon in shape. This man forgot that simple fact. There are other vital requirements for the rifle which you learned in earlier training. In combat, you'd better remember them or your rifle may put you out of action as quickly as an enemy bullet. For example, remember that this rifle is a high-powered weapon with a relatively small bore, slightly larger than a caliber 22. When firing, the bore must be clear of any obstructions, especially water. This man forgot to extract the round partially from the chamber to allow the water to run out. And when he presses the trigger, this is the result, a ruined rifle. And a rifleman out of action. The M16A1 is the Army's most modern rifle. Like any other weapon, it must have proper care and maintenance to function properly. This is the M16A1 as previously issued. And this is the modified version being issued today. Outwardly, the only difference in appearance is the enclosed flash suppressor on the newer model. Certain improvements have been made in the new model, but both weapons are cared for, cleaned and oiled with the proper lubricant in exactly the same way. This film will deal with the care, cleaning, and oiling of the M16A1 rifle. You've heard it all before, but too many men in combat either forget what they've been taught or ignore it. In either case, the results are the same, disastrous and sometimes fatal. To protect yourself and others, You've got to remember that to keep your M16A1 working right at all times, the rifle must be correctly cleaned and oiled as often as possible, at least after every day of firing. So consider this film as a refresher and check yourself against this man as he prepares to clean and oil his M16A1 properly. And for your own good, be sure that you can do all of the things he will demonstrate. All are important. Later, we will show you how to keep the rifle clean under combat conditions. In cleaning the M16A1, use materials which are issued. Before clearing the rifle, try to set the selector lever on safe. If the rifle is not cocked, the lever cannot be turned. With the magazine removed, pull back the charging handle and check the chamber. The hammer is now cocked and the selector lever can be turned to safe. With the rifle on safe, you can proceed to field strip the weapon. Pivot the upper receiver to the open position. Pull back the charging handle and pull out the bolt and carrier. Take out the charging handle and you are ready to begin cleaning your rifle. Clean your rifle only with bore cleaner, CR, or with carbon removing compound. Soak a cleaning patch with bore cleaner and run it all the way through the chamber and bore. 
When the patch comes out the other end, pull it back after making sure that it reverses itself. Never try to change direction while a patch is in the bore, or you will cause a serious and difficult jamming. With the bore coated with cleaner, you are now ready to brush it clean. Attach the bore brush to your cleaning rod. Soak it with bore cleaner and run it through the bore several times to loosen carbon and corrosion deposits. Again, never change direction while the brush is in the bore. When the bore has been well brushed, attach the chamber brush to your cleaning rod. Note the brush is larger at one end to clean the chamber thoroughly. With the handle section of the rod, make a T grip. Soak the chamber brush with bore cleaner. Then insert it into the chamber and using pushing and turning motions, clean the chamber and the bolt locking area of the barrel extension. Now, using a section of the rod with patch and patch holder attached, clean and dry the bolt locking area. With the cleaning rod assembled, run a dry patch through the chamber and bore. Continue this action using clean patches until one comes out clean. Never consider the bore or chamber to be clean until you inspect them visually. If any deposits remain, continue brushing and drying until the dirt is completely removed. With the bore and chamber cleaned, field strip the bolt carrier group. When the bolt carrier group has been field stripped, scrub the bolt with your bore brush and bore cleaner to remove all carbon and dirt, particularly from the locking lugs and the face of the bolt. Next, clean the area around and behind the rings. Scrub the firing pin well with a pipe cleaner soaked in bore cleaner. Then dry it with a dry pipe cleaner. When the bolt has been well scrubbed, wipe it dry. Carefully check the bolt for cracks, particularly in the cam pin hole area. Carefully examine the lip of the extractor to be sure it is not damaged and check the working of the extractor. Then remove it. Be careful not to remove the spring from the extractor. If it does come loose, see your armorer. Scrub the extractor with bore cleaner. Then dry it. Examine the pinholes for cracks or damage. Check the pin to be sure that it is straight. Using the bore brush and bore cleaner, carefully clean the extractor seat in the bolt. Then dry it. Using LSA small arms lubricant, oil the extractor and extractor spring before installing it in the bolt. Incidentally, this is the only oil to use on your M16A1.
Now reassemble the bolt and put it aside. Clean the bolt carrier. Start with the carrier key using a worn bore brush soaked in bore cleaner. Insert the brush as far as you can and turn it clockwise. This is a tight fit, so be sure the brush completely fills the key. To prevent freezing of the gas tube and possible gas blocking, the key must be clean. Dry the carrier key by wiping it with a pipe cleaner. After cleaning and drying the inside of the carrier, scrub the forward assist notches on the carrier. Then dry the carrier completely. Finally, clean and inspect the bolt cam pin. And if the cam pin appears to be badly worn, have it replaced. The upper receiver is next to be cleaned. Pay special attention to all of the dust cover components. Clean all areas of the rear sight. as well as the forward assist assembly. Now dry all of these areas. The inside of the upper receiver and the outside of the gas tube must also be cleaned. Again, use a worn bore brush and insert it through the back of the receiver to clean all exterior surfaces of the gas tube which mate with the carrier key. Although the gas tube is made so that no rust will form inside the tube itself, the outside must be cleaned. Then dry the gas tube completely. Clean the lower receiver by pouring bore cleaner into the recess. Then scrub all parts of the lower receiver. Clean the areas around springs and catches. After cleaning, flush out dirt, grit, and loose carbon with rifle bore cleaner. Dry the receiver with a swab. If you have the time, remove the buffer assembly by pressing down the buffer retainer and sliding the assembly and spring out past the hammer, which must also be depressed. Clean the lower receiver extension cavity with a patch soaked in bore cleaner. Then with a dry patch, dry the lower receiver extension cavity thoroughly. Use a pipe cleaner to clean the drain hole in the buttstock screw. Separate the spring from the buffer assembly. Note the difference between this new buffer and the old one. If you do not yet have a new buffer in your rifle, see your squad leader or your armorer about it. Using a rag soaked with bore cleaner, carefully clean the buffer and then the action spring. Now dry them.
Now apply LSA to a rag and wipe the buffer and spring. Then reassemble the spring to the buffer assembly. Be sure that the spring is fully seated. Now apply LSA to the inside of the lower receiver extension. Next, install the spring and buffer into the lower receiver extension cavity by simply reversing the action you use to take it out. Now check and clean the magazine. Rounds should be stripped from a magazine by sliding them out or by using a round to press them out. To avoid stoppages, inspect your magazines for any damage such as spread lips, dents, or bulges. If a magazine has any of these, turn it in for a good replacement. When taking a magazine apart or putting it together, never bend the tabs which hold the base plate in place, since they will break. Slide the plate off. Then take out the spring and follower. If the spring is weak or rusty, turn in the magazine for a serviceable one. Soak a rag with bore cleaner and clean the inside of the magazine. Then with a clean cloth, dry the inside of the magazine thoroughly. Never try to take the spring and follower apart. Just clean them and the base plate with the bore cleaner rag. And dry them with the clean dry cloth. Now wipe the spring with the LSA soaked cloth. This must be done to prevent the spring from rusting. When this is done, you can reassemble the magazine in reverse order of disassembly. Never apply oil or anything else to your ammunition, for to do so means almost certain stoppage problems. Just wipe them with a clean, dry cloth and nothing more. The magazine is designed to hold only 20 rounds. For example, when using a fully loaded magazine, never try to cram in the 21st round because it will spread the lips and result in feeding malfunctions. The 20th round is always on the right when the bullets point away from you. This completes the cleaning of the rifle with one exception. Periodically remove the hand guards. Pull the slip ring down and lift out the hand guards. If the slip ring is hard to pull down, get another man to help you. With the hand guards off, use a rag soaked with bore cleaner to remove any carbon or dirt that may have worked its way in and check for any damage during cleaning operations. Then dry them. Next, you will clean the barrel and slip ring components with bore cleaner. Then wipe dry and coat the barrel with a rag soaked with LSA. Then soak the slip ring spring with LSA through the barrel nut notches. Now reassemble the hand guards.
Having previously unscrewed and cleaned the front sight post, oil the front sight post area with LSA. This is necessary to keep water out and stop rust formation and freezing of front sight components. Using a round of ammunition, screw the front sight post to your known zero setting. Now you're ready to oil the rifle generously with LSA. First, apply a light coat of LSA to the barrel bore and chamber. Be sure that the bolt locking lug area is well coated, but remember that over lubrication of the bore or chamber could be detrimental. Generously oil all recessed areas of the lower receiver, all pins, springs, and working parts. Hand operate all working parts to ensure lubrication of hidden areas. Finally, pay particular attention to the selector lever, and remember, stoppages in the lower receiver are caused by too little rather than too much oil. Now oil the inside of the upper receiver with a patch soaked with LSA. Be sure to apply LSA to the forward assist rear sight windage drum and rear sight index screw. Now oil all functional parts of the dust cover assembly. Here again, be sure the oil is evenly distributed to all moving parts and hidden areas. Keep the dust cover closed when the rifle is not being fired to keep dust or dirt out of the rifle. Notice that LSA is also issued in quart cans. Apply LSA to the charging handle latch spring. Also wipe the rest of the charging handle with the cloth soaked with LSA. Then oil the carrier key using only one drop of LSA. Too much can cause a stoppage. Slide the carrier back and forth inside the upper receiver to check alignment. The key must mate correctly with the gas tube. If it binds, turn the rifle in for repair. Oil the outside surface of the carrier. Then, using a patch soaked in LSA, oil the inside surfaces of the carrier. Now, oil the outside of the bolt assembly. Then, assemble it to the carrier. Oil the cam pin and install it. This must be in place to rotate the bolt for locking and unlocking the action. If the cam pin is left out, the first shot you fire will ruin the rifle. So remember, always install the cam pin. Lightly oil the firing pin by wiping it with the LSA rag and install it. Complete the assembly of the bolt carrier group by installing the firing pin retaining pin. Next, the charging handle is assembled to the upper receiver. However, when you do this, be sure to line the tabs on the handle with notches in the upper receiver as you slide the handle into place. Then install the bolt and bolt carrier 
and be sure it is properly seated. Close the rifle and wipe the outside metal surfaces with an LSA rag to protect these areas from rust or corrosion. This ends the full cleaning and oiling of the M16A1, except for the bayonet and bipod, which must also be cleaned and oiled to prevent rust. And remember, it's always your responsibility to notify your squad leader when you need repairs that you are not authorized to perform. In the field, and especially in combat, it won't always be possible to do the complete cleaning and oiling we have just seen. To keep your rifle and ammunition ready to use when you need them, they must be cleaned at least every day, more often when the weather is bad or your rifle has been subjected to sustained firing. So for your own protection, after every firing, or as often as you can, do the following things in this order. First, clean your rifle chamber and oil it lightly with LSA. Second, clean the bolt carrier group, including the carrier key. Third, if you have time, clean the bore and run an LSA soaked patch through it. Finally, clean the upper and lower receivers using a patch or brush to reach the inside surfaces. One thing more, check and clean your magazines and ammunition. It will take no longer to perform this cleaning operation than to smoke a cigarette, and it might save your life. It's the clean, well-oiled rifle that shoots when you need it. It's the neglected weapon that gives out in the middle of a firefight. If you don't keep your rifle clean and find yourself in a spot like this, there is an emergency expedient that you should remember. Squirt liberal amounts of LSA onto the open ejection port with the bolt to the rear, but do not get any into the chamber or bore since this would create a dangerous condition. This emergency action should get your rifle working again until you can really clean and lubricate it. Remember, this is only an expedient. It cannot take the place of regular and correct cleaning. You have already seen that with the M16A1, failure to extract can be a serious and dangerous problem to the rifleman. Yet, as a rifleman, you can avoid such problems. Just think about the main causes of failures to extract. First, a dirty chamber. Second, dirty, damaged, or corroded ammunition. Third, a weak extractor spring or a worn extractor. Finally, a pitted chamber. As a rifleman, you can avoid each of these causes, although extraction problems due to other conditions, such as gas leakage, require that you turn the weapon in for repair. By keeping your chamber cleaned and oiled, you will prevent pitting, as well as extraction failures caused by a dirty chamber. Failure to extract, caused by worn parts, can be prevented by carefully checking the extractor and extractor spring each time you clean your weapon and having them replaced if they are weak or worn. Extraction failures caused by dirty or damaged ammunition can be prevented by keeping your ammo clean and dry. Finally, the problem of ammunition corroding in your rifle can be prevented by never leaving a round in the chamber more than a day. Remove it before it can corrode. Sometimes it may be necessary to use corroded ammunition in urgent situations where clean ammo is not available. On such occasions, there is a combat expedient which may help to overcome extraction problems caused by corrosion. That is to oil the corroded cartridges with LSA immediately before firing. But this is the only time you should ever do this. As you've been told time and again, never apply oil, grease, or other substances to your rounds. But when firing corroded ammunition, 
Tests have shown that the only way extraction problems can be avoided is by oiling the rounds with LSA immediately before using. This is an expedient only for corroded ammo. But remember it well, it may come in very handy someday. A serious problem with the M16A1 rifle, which we noted earlier in this film, is due completely to carelessness on the part of the rifleman. This problem is caused by the fact that water in the bore of any rifle may cause it to explode when fired. When water gets into the small bore of a loaded M16A1, it cannot be simply poured out. To drain the water out, you must break the seal caused by the cartridge in the chamber. Point the muzzle down and partially retract the round from the chamber, allowing air to enter the bore. The water will then drain out completely. Only in this way can you safely fire an M16A1, which has had water in its barrel. By draining, you can protect your weapon and yourself from the results you saw earlier. These, then, are the things you must remember and do to keep your rifle ready to go when you need it. You've heard them in training, and you've heard them here. Now, remember them. For your protection, keep your rifle chamber, bolt, and carrier clean and well-oiled at all times. Keep your ammo and magazines clean and dry. Keep your bore free from any obstructions and keep the dust cover closed when not firing. Do these simple things frequently and regularly to your M16A1, and you'll discover that when you need it, this weapon will give you trouble-free performance under the most difficult conditions.